Well, to discuss the influence of the 1980s, or 83 in particular, on today's politics and culture, I'm joined from Glasgow by the Labour MP Pamela Nash, the youngest MP in the House of Commons, and here in the studio is Pauline Black. Remember this? <laughs> Well, Pauline Black was, of course, lead singer of the ska band, The Selector. Um, when you look at these secrets as they're, as they're revealed, um, take, take the Greenham Common and the whole nuclear issue. What, what, what it reveals is that actually the government seemed quite scared of public opinion uh, and the power of the anti-nuclear voice. You were, you were in those voices. Did you have any sense of that at the time? At the time, I think we all knew that they were scared. We knew that, uh, well, I certainly felt that those ladies who were going to Greenham Common um, had, had an agenda, but, of course, the media painted it in an entirely different way. And, uh, and in a couple of years' time, they had some sympathy at the beginning. It was an entirely different thing, and they were enemies of the people in that sense. And, um, but there, they, there we have it today. There is the Queen turning around, you know, with a speech all ready to go. This was a nuclear threat. Those women at Greenham Common were absolutely right to do what they did. Um, pa Pamela Nash, um, I mean, you, you weren't born until 1983, so just after these revelations, uh, 84, I guess, sorry, just after these revelations, but do you have a sense now of the fear that people lived in the nuclear threat in those days? Yes, I think this is a, certainly a wake-up call today to people of my generation of the fear that people had in 1983 and the 80s um, of the, the Cold War threat to our country, which we sometimes forget today. Do you think that much has changed when you look at those secrets? Uh, in terms of how politics all the worked. secrets that came out today, um, I think the the comparisons are almost humorous compared looking at uh, what happened in the 80s to today. Um, but in terms of our current government and how they work in the divisive politics of the 80s, um, we are right back there today in 2013. Um, how, how similar do you, do you feel we are now? If you, if you think about what was motivating you, Pauline Black, musically, and a lot of artists in those times, has, are, we, are we sort of back there? Have we gone full circle? Well, the musical movement that I was part of, Two Tone, we had an anti-racist stance and we had an anti-sexist stance. We are now living at a time now when racism seems to be pretty much all pervasive in a different way maybe than it was back then, but nonetheless, people are wary about embracing multiculturalism. Um, which I feel is the way forward for everybody in this country. And uh, in terms of violence towards women, there is more violence towards women now, probably uh, worldwide on a global scale, than there, there was then. So not much progress, Pamela Nash, in some ways. Yeah, well, let's be clear. My, I mean, my politics and much of the politics of the Labour Party and Scottish Labour were formed in the 80s in opposition to what was happening round about us, particularly in Lanarkshire, from Thatcher's policies. Um, myself, very personally affected. Um, I was in a, a loving family environment, um, but I was also a, a child of a, a single parent. Um, this was a group that was vilified in Thatcher's Britain in 83 and throughout the 80s, and this affected my generation and the, the politics that we bring to Parliament today. Well, just stay with us for a moment. John, I mean, you've been talking to people, younger people today, mm. about the, the hangover, if you like, of the 80s. Yes, apparently the 80s are cool again. The best of the 80s culture seems to have stood the test of time, and 30 years on, it's influencing today's generation, as I've been finding out. Haven't we seen all this before? You could be forgiven for thinking that one of the biggest hits in the charts at the moment was itself produced in the 80s. The Marvin Gaye beat... the Robert Palmer sultry backing girls to the Michael Jackson falsetto. Dance moves. The fashion. Even the ugly, ubiquitous 80s jacket worn here in the Goonies film made it back this time in a silver version. Oh, and in case I forget, those Tom Cruise Top Gun aviators. Oh. I brought this over because I want to watch you watch the end of this movie. And even last year's blockbuster movie, 
Pitch Perfect referenced an 80s film. The Breakfast Club, 1985. Greatest ending to any movie ever. What is it about the 80s? Well, what better place to go than a cafe named after that famous 1985 movie? Here we are, 30 years on. Um, what, what, what's cool from the 80s still? Well, it's amazing if you watch old 80s sitcoms like The Cosby Show, and you see how people like Denise Huxtable, played by Lisa Bonet, dress. That's how hipsters dress today. These kind of big baggy jumpers, these kind of ridiculous long skirts, these crazy hats. That's now seen as a kind of trendy thing. I'm a product of the 80s. And my dad's Nigerian and my mum's Scottish, and it wasn't the done thing, but, you know, they made it work. And I think in terms of culture and in terms of Britain becoming what it is today, that was, you know, where it started. And possibly Possibly because of all the struggles that people were facing and things were difficult politically and you know there was the big crash of the 80s financially and all of that stuff maybe you know that's what made us what we are today. A lot of the Michael Jackson stuff from the 80s is still brilliant and still sounds amazing. Um, Bowie, um, even some Madonna still sounds great um, but then you know there's a lot of kind of like big power ballads and stuff that, that they're, they're fun and they have their place but they're not necessarily that cool. Cool or not, there's one man convinced the 80s were. I got love for you if you were born in the 80s, the 80s. Well, our guests are still with us. Pauline Black, I mean, in terms of music, the 80s were actually quite influential, weren't they, if you look at what's going on now? I think the early 80s was very influential. I think that you could say about the two-tone movement that I was part of, that it was arguably the last kind of serious political um, bands with a political agenda that were actually coming along. Um, after that, you had very much kind of the thing of wham, you know, let's have fun on the dole and all this kind of nonsense and, and that. I will probably get shot down in flames for saying this, but um, it's, I, I, I think the early 80s were, in that way, um, political. So what do you make of... Of, you know, the, 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 the young lady with the wonderful <laughs> hairstyle talking about multiculturalism, I thought that was wonderful. If we did anything and it made people come together and actually come together to, to make lots of, you know, sort of brown-skinned people in this country to liven things up a bit, then great. Um, Pamela Nash, um, I, I look at my video wall in which you, you feature, you loom large, and you're kind of wearing a bit of an 80s thing with your hair, and you've got, you've got shoulder pads. And I'm just wondering if you're aware of the 80s revival. Well, I, I can't see your screen or the video you've just played, but I was interested in hearing uh, the young ladies talk about vintage clothing. And certainly I raid my family's wardrobes for 80s clothes uh, and buy a lot of 80s clothes. Certainly my style and my music taste was forged in 80s, even though I was so very young. And, and so, so th this is a, it's a revival you'll embrace? Definitely, Still. absolutely. Um, Pauline, you, would you advise against this? You, you seem a bit sceptical about everything <laughs> after... I would advise I mean, against shoulder pads. I mean, Scar disappeared in the early pads. 80s and you gave way to pop. <laughs> well, it did disappear, yes, that's true. But the ideas, the fact that Nelson Mandela was still um, in prison at that time, all of those things, now, let's not forget what the 80s was actually about. And let's not just think that it was all about big hair and shoulder pads. It was about some things that were very, very divisive. And, uh, and in the case of Nelson Mandela, actually came good from some music. Free Pauline Black, Mandela. thank you very much indeed for coming in today. Thank you. Uh, and Pauline Nash, thanks for joining us as well.